Hi guys, this is Carla, and this time I'm here to do a review for episode 11 of season 3 of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This episode is titled Bouncing Back, and yay, S.H.I.E.L.D. is back! Uh, it's been an okay break uh, break in the season with um, Agent Carter, um, which I really love as well, but it's good to have our favorite S.H.I.E.L.D. agents back. Um... This episode I liked. Um, at the same time, it I, I guess I maybe I set my expectations too high because I think that opening um, the opening episodes of like a, a season or the mid season for me in Shield Agents of Shield tends to do that really well. I like I usually tend to like the first episode and certainly the first episode of season three was fantastic. So I was hoping they would come out swinging in a way, um, because this season itself just has gone so fast. I, I was hoping that this would be very, you know, kind of critical and key and sort of intense. And I didn't really get that feeling, but I still liked the episode quite a lot. Um, it might also have something to do with the fact that from the opening scene itself, um, okay, I know that this is this is something <laughs> that's very kind of personal to me because I know that most of the people who are listening to this review right now don't share that same experience with me, but when TV shows and movies and stuff like that do um, do scenes or, 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 or take place in a different country and a Latin American country particularly. Um, I live in that in Latin America. I'm from Latin America. I was born here. I lived here my whole life. Um, Spanish is my native language. So I know that most um, English speakers won't notice anything. But for me, the differences in accents uh, between the people who speak in the show or or movie are very noticeable. I mean, I, I appreciate the fact that they didn't just have them speak English all the time and they that they actually used Spanish and had the subtitles. I appreciate that, but at the same time, the accents kind of throw me off a little bit because, I mean, if you take a look at the first scene in this episode, for example, for me it was very obvious that it was people who speak Spanish. I mean, the Spanish was grammatically correct um, all the time, but it, the construction was kind of like a little bit off in the way that it you kind of sit there and go, hey, mm, people don't really talk like that. You know, like the, the way the sentences were constructed was like very formal, very, very by the book. And people <laughs> don't, it, it feels, it sounds really off to my ears. And their accents, you could tell that this was people, these were people who, um, these are people who live in the States and aren't, don't really speak Spanish on a day-to-day -day basis, so you could hear their accent, and it was very clear that they were not Colombian to me. Um, so I know that this is sort of a unique experience to myself, and if you guys are in that same predicament to me, then feel free to comment and let me know <laughs> whether you felt that way or not, but for me, it's not that it's bad. Like I said, I appreciate what they're trying to do, but at the same time, it, it just takes me out of the scene, and that might have affected the way I felt about the beginning of the episode, especially um, not just that one, the first scene, but also the, um, just, Yo-Yo was great. I, I love her. I, I really think she's really cool. I like her power, how it works. I liked um, the way that she interacted with Mac. I thought that was really cool and, and really entertaining. But you could tell she wasn't Colombian, man. She's just, like, as soon as she started speaking, I'm like, this lady is Mexican and you cannot tell me otherwise because it's so clear to me. And it, again, I don't mind. I like that they use people who actually are from Latin America and who actually speak Spanish um, correctly. And don't just try to, like, Google translate it and it turns out shit. But it's still, you know, to my ears, 
it sounds a little bit off, so it kind of takes me out. It's not that it was a bad start of the episode or anything. The scenes they were in were great. And like I said, I loved Elena. I thought she was a great new introduction. Um, I like her power. I thought it was... I mean, for the... Initially, I was like, wait, are they going to, like, give her Quicksilver, Quicksilver's powers? Because, you know, Quicksilver is a person that exists in the Marvel Universe right now. So, like, are, are they just going to make her run really fast? What is going on? But I like that it was different. Um, it's just... Uh, when they're speaking English... I, I, I'm i sorry, when they're speaking Spanish, it's... You can tell. I can tell, and it, it took me out. It's not that it was a bad scene, just it took me out, and I couldn't really get into it for that point um uh you can on the other hand you have people like Juan Raba who plays Joey he's Colombian and he really is Colombian so you could tell when he was speaking that you know his accent was right um the uh policeman Yancy something I don't remember his last name the policeman um he's I know he's from the U.S. but clearly he has uh, more practice um, with the language. I'm guessing he probably speaks Spanish at home or something. I think he's like half Colombian or half Puerto Rican. I know I've seen him in other stuff, so I recognize that I probably we get him before, so I knew that he was actually like Latin American. And his accent was okay. I mean, it wasn't quite Colombian, but he could pull it off, you know, in a way, in, in a way that a U.S. person might pull off a British accent in that sort of way. It's not that jarring like like Yo-Yo who was speaking like a Mexican. But whatever. It's it's fine. It's just a personal thing. It doesn't mean that any of those scenes were great. Like I said, I, I like Yo-Yo. I like this little thing she has with Mac. I thought that was really nice because, you know, everybody else is freaking paired off in this office or in this group and Mac is just standing there like, yo, I'm awesome but I'm by myself, you know, so I kind of hope that there's something there, you know, in the future, and I definitely hope that we get to see Yo-Yo again, because she's awesome, she's awesome, and I really love her, um, her, her, uh, just attitude about things, um, I like the way they include religion as something good, not necessarily bad, so that's interesting, I do wonder about the beginning, though, the very, very, very beginning of the episode where we see something in space like in a spaceship or whatever and we see the necklace floating and we know it's her necklace we just don't know if it's her so now that we see that she's actually like you know she has this kind of thing with mac i'm wondering is it going to be mac is it going to be her is it going to be someone else i guess we just have to pay attention to the damn necklace um Apart from that, um, I thought the beginning of the episode was okay, but it felt a little bit like the calm before the storm in a way. Um, like I said before, I, I expected them to come out swinging, and I was surprised at how slow it felt at the beginning, but not that it was bad, it was just slow. It was like they were recouping, and okay, they have to do that, I get it, but I just wasn't expecting to see it, you know, um, but it picked up. Um, after Bobby and Hunter got themselves kidnapped, <laughs> um, it got better. You know, the, the actual rescue mission was a lot better. Um, I didn't care one bit for the Von Strucker thing at all. I don't really get... Um, I mean, I kind of get it in the sense that Hydra has been immersed in human history since they were conceived, since the group was first conceived, and, um, they have, like, hands in every pot, I get it, but Mali just didn't seem that powerful, I mean, he seemed to be really smart, and he seemed to be, like, kind of a philosophical, philosophical leader, leader to me, um, like, Hydra leader, that's what I thought. I just didn't... I didn't realize he was that big of a deal, I guess. Or like, worldwide. Um, it's interesting, though, that Coulson can just call him that quickly. Um, I know they got the information out of Von Strucker, but still, it felt a little bit too easy for me. So I, I, I don't know what to think about that. 
Um, I really did like the the whole um, rescue they put together to get Bobby and Hunter back. I love the way they used Yo-Yo. I loved that um, Daisy actually allowed her to like just go back home and kind of try to communicate with them from home. I thought that was really nice of her. Um, and I like that, as May said, that Coulson is starting to like let his people do their own thing. Because Daisy has an idea of how she wants to run her team, her secret warriors. She, she kind of is developing her own idea and Seers are never a good thing. If there's one thing I've learned from S.H.I.E.L.D., not just in this show, but just in the MCU overall, secrets are not a good thing. It's always going to come out, and it's always going to destroy something or someone, you know? So, I, I like the idea that Coulson kind of sees that he might not be in the right place to make decisions for everybody in that office. Um, which is interesting, because at the beginning, he kind of freaked me out. A little bit. He was really scary when he told uh, Fitz to actually get the machine. I'm like, oh my god, he's actually going to put someone in that thing. Um, so, but I'm glad that he kind of had a realization that he might not be the be in the best state of mind to actually order his team um, to do things they don't want to do. So I like that he's letting Daisy kind of do her own thing. I like that Daisy's giving her people freedom because... They need it, man. You can't just kidnap people. It's like, hey, you're gonna be on my team now. You don't need to family to see your family ever again anymore. Really, that it doesn't work like that. You want to keep your people happy. You have to give them some kind of freedom. So I like that. Um, I like how they're kind of introducing um, Lincoln to the team. I thought that was cool um, because he is a doctor after all. It's not like he's just some dude. You know, he's a doctor, he has knowledge, and he's studied in humans, so I, I like this idea that he can give them intel, so long as they treat the inhumans humanely. Um, well, that was fun to say. Um, <laughs> uh, so I like the way they, they, do, they did that. Um, that one last scene in the, uh, in the locker room when Daisy's like, eh, maybe I should let you go too, and he's like, I don't know, maybe... I kind of like it here. And then they kiss. And, you know, I'm like the only person on God's green earth that has no problem with the ship. I do think it happened a little bit too fast. And that's why a lot of people just don't receive it well. But I like it because I like Lincoln. And I want Daisy to have someone that is not Ward. Because by now Ward is like dead, dead, I'm sure of it. Um, but... When they kissed in that moment, I just had the most horrible, sinking feeling that Lincoln is going to die. And now every time I see him in the next few episodes, I'm just going to get chills because I that just I don't know where it came from, that feeling, but I just feel like he's going to die. And I'm really sad about it because I really love Lincoln, damn it. Um, but I don't know. I hope I'm wrong. But... Because I'm usually wrong about these things, so I hope I'm wrong in this one, but I don't know. Um, as far as uh, Bobby and Hunter were so great, man. They were so great in this episode, like, back and forth with each other. And Hunter is always so awesome with those random one-liners that he comes up with, so I really like that. Um, and then there were Fitz and Gemma, you know? Um... I kind of like that they started over again. I, I've been talking to my uh, fellow staff members about this. Um, and I really do think there's, there's very... For both Leo and Gemma, this has been a hard, hard three years, okay? Um, and things just aren't the way they were. The two of them aren't the way they were, and I think both of them are just carrying so much guilt about so many things. And I think this episode showed that, in the sense that Fitz feels guilty about Will, even though there's like no human possible way that he could even know, because he wasn't even in the planet when Will died. You know, I mean, he was there, but he had just come through the portal, 
to save Gemma. Like, how could he have held Will? It's ridiculous, impossible, but he still feels bad about it, you know? So I think both of them kind of have guilt that they're carrying around for different things. Um, and I think it's a good sign that they kind of started over in this one. I thought that scene was really, really cute, too. Um, I, I, I really hope they can get it together, though, because I don't think I can't stand something else happening to, like, break them up. <laughs> but I think this is a good start. So we'll see how it goes. Um, only thing that I really didn't, um, didn't like is just this idea that Hydra still is still stealing in humans, I guess, for Hive. I know that Ward is Hive. I didn't really understand much of what Ward was going about. Like, does, does Gideon think that he's not Hive? Does Gideon think that this is still Ward? Somehow, like, I... I'm confused on that point. I didn't really get it, um, but I, I, I didn't really understand either how this whole thing. Like, oh, when I'm strong, I will prove it to you. He's, wasn't he strong? Like, is he not supposed to be strong? What is going on? Like, why is he diminished? Um, why are his capabilities diminished? I guess his only mutant ability right now is looking like something the Earth, you know swallowed up chewed and then spit out <laughs> i don't know so it's i'm kind of confused about that so but like i said this episode was very much like relief after major insanity which was the end the mid-season finale so they took it really slow they didn't really answer many questions um that we had before they didn't really like start up any new questions or anything they they just kind of showed us what was happening after um but i guess we'll see uh i just i don't know there's a lot of things that i still don't quite understand but i'm sure it will be revealed eventually especially when it comes to hive um because right now shield doesn't know that hive is back shield doesn't know that hive is inhabiting ward's body um so when that comes out and it explodes, because it's going to explode, um, that's what I really want to see. And maybe then Hive will actually, like, be an, an actual contender, an actual um, big bad that they can fight against. Because as of now, he doesn't look that impressive. He, he seemed really scared, scary on Mavis, but right now, he seems kind of blah. And I don't know why he doesn't have his full power, so I hope they explain it so that I feel a little bit better about it. That said, props to the makeup department. That makeup on Ward, like, I never thought I would ever want to want Red Dalton to put a shirt on. <laughs> because he's gorgeous, so every time he's shirtless, I'm instantly like, yay! But this time around, I mean, he, like I said, he looks like a tapeworm in human form, honestly, like, he's so freaking creepy, and Brett Dalton can pull off creepy, I think, I mean, he's pulled off evil fairly well through the course of this season, especially, um, so I would like to see what they do with the creepy, and just the way, the way that he looked at Gideon when he came in and asked what he could do for him, the way he just kind of looked up from the side, that was that was pretty creepy. So I, I like that. Props to the makeup department; they're really cool. Um, and yeah, so this was an okay episode. It didn't blow me over. It started off kind of slow, and there were things about it that kind of irked me a little bit, whether it be the Spanish thing or uh, the word thing that I don't, still don't quite understand. But it got better. I liked the rescue effort and. Um, I, I like Yo-Yo. I like that she has something apparently with Mac, and I like that we don't really know where that is going, you know, with the whole necklace thing. So, interesting. Um, we'll be waiting for them to explain some more stuff um, in the future, in future episodes. So, yeah, for now, it was an okay start to the second half of the season, and I'm looking forward to the rest of it. So, that's pretty much it from this for this review. Um, as usual, be sure to visit our website at thegeekbub.com. 
We have reviews not just for the previous episodes of our Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but also for other TV shows, books, movies, games. We have a ton of stuff in there, so be sure to visit and check it out. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, because that is usually where um, all our reviews go up first. Even before they hit the website, most of the time they're up in YouTube. So if you don't want to miss anything that we upload, then you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel right now. ASAP. Um, and that's it for me today. I will see you guys in my next review. Bye.